We continue today with Chapter 3, Section Creating versus the Self-Image. Every system of thought must have a starting point. It begins with either a making or creating, a difference we have already discussed. Their resemblance lies in their power as foundations. Their difference lies in what rests upon them. Both are cornerstones for systems of belief by which one lives. It is a mistake to believe that a thought system based on lies is weak. Nothing made by a child of God is without power. It is essential to realize this because otherwise you will be unable to escape from the prison you have made. You cannot resolve the authority problem by depreciating the power of your mind. To do so is to deceive yourself, and this will hurt you because you really understand the strength of the mind. You also realize that you cannot weaken it any more than you can weaken God. The, quote, devil is a frightening concept because he seems to be extremely powerful and extremely active. He is perceived as a force in combat with God, battling with him for possession of his creations. The devil deceives by lies and builds kingdoms in which everything is in direct opposition to God. Yet he attracts men rather than repels them, and they are willing to, quote, sell him their souls in return for gifts of no real worth. This makes absolutely no sense. We have discussed the fall or separation before, but its meaning must be clearly understood. The separation is a system of thought real enough in time, though not in eternity. All beliefs are real to the believer. The fruit of only one tree was, quote, forbidden in the symbolic garden, but God could not have forbidden it or it could not have been eaten. If God knows his children, and I assure you that he does, would he have put them in a position where their own destruction was possible? The, quote, forbidden tree was named the tree of knowledge, yet God created knowledge and gave it freely to his creations. The symbolism here has been given many interpretations but you may be sure that any interpretation that sees either God or his creations as capable of destroying their own will, purpose, in, is in error. Eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge is a symbolic expression for usurping the ability for self-creating. This is the only sense in which God and his creations are not co-creators. The belief that they are is implicit in the, quote, self-concept, or tendency of the self to make an image of itself. Images are perceived, not known. Knowledge cannot deceive but perception can. You can perceive yourself as self-creating, but you cannot do more than believe it. You cannot make it true. And, as I said before, when you finally perceive correctly, you can only be glad that you cannot. Until then, however, the belief that you can is the foundation stone in your thought system, and all your defenses are used to attack ideas that might bring it to light. You still believe you are an image of your own making. Your mind is split with the Holy Spirit on this point, and there is no resolution while you believe the one thing that is literally inconceivable. That is why you cannot create and are filled with fear about what you make. 
the mind can make the belief in separation very real and very fearful, and this belief is the, quote, devil. It is powerful, active, destructive, and clearly in opposition to God, because it literally denies his fatherhood. Look at your life and see what the devil has made. But realize that this making will surely dissolve in the light of truth, because its foundation is a lie. Your creation by God is the only foundation that cannot be shaken, because the light is in it. Your starting point is truth, and you must return to your beginning. Much has been seen since then but nothing has really happened. Your capital self is still at peace, even though your mind is in conflict. You have not yet gone back far enough, and that is why you become so fearful. As you approach the beginning, you feel the fear of the destruction of your thought system upon you as if it were the fear of death. There is no death, but there is a belief in death. The branch that bears no fruit will be cut off and will wither away. Be glad! The light will shine from the true foundation of life, and your own thought system will stand corrected. It cannot stand otherwise. You who fear salvation are choosing death. Life and death, light and darkness, knowledge and perception are irreconcilable. To believe that they can be reconciled is to believe that God and His Son cannot. Only the oneness of knowledge is free of conflict. Your kingdom is not of this world because it was given you from beyond this world. Only in this world is the idea of an authority problem meaningful. The world is not left by death, but by truth, and truth can be known by all those for whom the kingdom was created, and for whom it waits. And from the workbook, lesson number 22. What I see is a form of vengeance. Today's idea accurately describes the way anyone who holds attack thoughts in his mind must see the world. Having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him. His own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. This becomes an increasingly vicious circle until he is willing to change how he sees. Otherwise, thoughts of attack and counterattack will preoccupy him and people his entire world. What peace of mind is possible to him then? It is from this savage fantasy that you want to escape. Is it not joyous news to hear that it is not real? Is it not a happy discovery to find that you can escape? You made what you would destroy. Everything that you hate and would attack and kill. All that you fear does not exist. Look at the world about you at least five times today, for at least a minute each time. And as your eyes move slowly from one object to another, from one body to another, say to yourself, I see only the perishable. I see nothing that will last. 
What I see is not real. What I see is a form of vengeance. At the end of each practice period, ask yourself, is this the world I really want to see? The answer is surely obvious. What I see is a form of vengeance. So today's workbook lesson, again, ties together the mind with perception, thoughts with images, and particularly focuses on attack thoughts produce a perception that is a form of vengeance. What seems to be violence in this world is the acting out of attack thoughts that are held in mind, held in consciousness, desired to be there. The world is a witness of the thoughts in the mind. So Jesus tells us, having projected his anger onto the world, he sees vengeance about to strike at him. And then further, his own attack is thus perceived as self-defense. So, any time there is a feeling of defensiveness arising in the mind, at any time, at any place, this is the opportunity to pause and to realize attack thoughts are arising in awareness. And as they are arising, it is important to remember that this is an opportunity for healing. That these thoughts have been called upon, called into awareness, that they may be released. The world is merely witnessing to thoughts in the mind. And it really doesn't matter what the images are. When there is an attempt to defend against an image, or to justify a defense against an image, this simply means that attack thoughts are valued in the mind. And the ego is valued more than peace, more than love. And so today, we open up our hearts and minds to see the world differently, to release all attack, all vengeance, and to open to the peace of God deep within. To affirm in our hearts that there is nothing more that we want. To affirm again that this world is nothing more than the reflection of thoughts. To be grateful for the world, for its mirroring, for all the opportunities that we are given to release attack thoughts. Because we can only experience the peace of God, the innocence of spirit, as we see, as we experience, the impossibility of attack. 
peace, innocence, happiness, joy cannot coexist with the belief in attack. Because the belief in attack is the belief that it's possible to leave the mind of the Creator and make up a world apart from the Creator. And every seeming little irritation and annoyance is just a reverberation, just a reflection of this one insane, tiny, mad idea. So today, as we move through the day, look around, observe the world as emotions and thoughts move through consciousness and remind yourself what I see is a form of vengeance.